Okay, so now we'll go through um, some of the new uh, features of Shibboleth 2. So first of all, we'll look at um, a side-by-side -side comparison of Shibboleth 1.3 and Shibboleth 2. Here you can see on the left, Shibboleth uh, 1.3. Uh, and there's no, the main difference is really for the fact that on a default install we're going to use the mod proxy instead of mod JK. And that's really just because the support is in there now um, and it's easier to configure. Also, you'll notice CAS and SSO is slightly different than Shibboleth 2. And basically this is because Shibboleth itself uh, can now do authentication. So at the start of pres uh, the presentation I started uh, talking about Shibboleth is middleware and it doesn't do any authentication. In Shibboleth 2 we do have the option for adding in authentication. So some of the improvements. Interoperability uh, is a major feature of, of Shibboleth 2 um, because there's already a big user base of Shibboleth, Shibboleth 1.3 and in some cases Shibboleth 1.2. So it was built to be backwards compatible uh, with older Shibboleth versions. Uh, in addition to that, it is also built to be uh, compatible with other commercial um, solutions uh, and other open source uh, federated uh, solutions. Um, so Shibboleth 2 has got support for SAML 2. So uh, Shibboleth 1.3 only had SAML 1.1 support. So we get the benefits of uh, the new features set of SAML 2. Um, as mentioned earlier, you saw the new default um, flow of logging on with the Shibboleth 2, um, where it cuts out a lot of a lot of the unnecessary calls backwards and forwards um, of the attribute handling, uh, like you did in 1.3. So you've now got a, a quicker um, quicker way of getting your attributes, um, and it's all done over SSL, so it's still secure. Um, so a big big thing in uh, Shibboleth 2 is the improved support for managing metadata um, and one of the main benefits of this is it actually downloads the, the metadata in real time so no, no longer do we need to worry about setting up our metadata downloads to, uh, to make sure it's in sync with, uh, with the UK Federation metadata so that can be set um, and it's downloaded automatically when the, whenever there's any updates um, We've also got a flexible new attribute release uh, and acceptance policy engines um, and the syntax is similar across uh, the RDP and the SP uh, which makes administering a little bit easier. Um, integration with most identity provider stores um, so we can connect to Active Directory, eDirectory, um, connect with Kerberos uh, and any L LDAP compliant directory services. And we can also connect uh, to any databases using the JDBC drivers. We've got improved backend support uh, in the IDP for persistent opaque identifiers. Um, and there's new mechanisms, and we can actually store that in a database instead of creating it on the fly um, as we do in Shibboleth 1.3. The IDP can reload almost all configuration files within a running system, so we don't need to restart the whole um, IDP service just to get new configuration files in. And if we do make modifications, um, they're made pretty much uh, immediately. Uh, and the IDP now maintains separate access and audit logs. So you, you've got a clear separation of, of that information, uh, making it easier to analyse uh, your, your logs afterwards. Um, Some more functionality that's in there. Um, Encryption of user data between the providers um, is done now, so we can we can encrypt um, attributes, and obviously everything's encrypted over SSL anyway. Um, with the Shibboleth 2, as you saw, the information is actually being passed through, including the attributes can be passed through uh, the user's browser. So that the actual attributes themselves need to be encrypted as well. For instances where um, a user, a rogue user, could be on the, on that machine, or even a um, kind of piece of hardware or something could be on there that's looking at this data, uh, the attributes. So that is encrypted as well at the attribute level. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there's uh, authentication support available now in the IDP, and that's via JAAS. So we could put various Java authentication plugins in there. 
So that may be something as simple as having a uh, form linked to your LDAP server. There's extensive clustering support uh, for both the IDP and the SP. Uh, the IDP now uses Terracotta for the, uh, the clustering support, which is a, a well used and, um, and stable platform for clustering Java applications. There's also an updated discovery service. Um, which uses the new uh, SAML discovery service protocol uh, and it actually supports multiple federations now um, which is good for a lot of service providers who are now finding themselves um, members of multiple federations. The SP side has now got fast CGI support um, so that may be useful for particular um, web resources where they've been using, where they've got fast CGI set up. Um, and there's stable and documented APIs for extending a variety of IDP and SP functionality. So a lot of the new Shibboleth IDP is, um, is built on plugins, so it's relatively easy to add new functionality into the code base just by um, creating your own plugins. Okay, so we've got more options for deployment now uh, with Shibboleth 2. Um, we got we had support for a Tomcat only deploy. Um, in 1.3, um, and for those of you who don't know what Tomcat is, it's basically uh, a Java servlet engine that essentially runs the shipload software. Um, but it's a lot easier now, especially now we've got um, shipload doing authentication itself, so we can configure everything within the shipload itself. Um, and this is generally the easiest way to get uh, shipload up and running. The, Although it is recommended, you do still use Apache in the front end to Tomcat for production environments. The installation process um, has been simplified. So now, instead of having to uh, create your own certificates, the installation process will actually create those for you. Uh, it also generates metadata based on uh, the input that you put uh, in the installation script. On the service provider side, Packages can actually be uh, installed on on any uh, well on all the major platforms, for example, Windows, Linux, um, Solaris, uh, and other Unix platforms, and also uh, on the Mac. 